Hello there, food wishers. Can you see me? I can see you. A lot of people don't realize uh, after you get 3 million plus subscribers on YouTube, they actually let you uh, watch your viewers through the, you know, camera on your laptop. So in case you weren't aware of that, just a heads up, um, you know, don't do anything you wouldn't do in front of your YouTube video chefs and grandparents. Uh, anyway, welcome to another chat where for the next hour or so, I will attempt to answer questions of the members and uh, mostly ramble on aimlessly, uh, occasionally making a, uh, a point or two. Uh, anyway, a little update from Kismet. Things are going really well. We are putting in baseboards ourselves. I'm not sure if you saw the video I posted a few days ago of me attempting to use a miter saw, uh, which so far, so good. Um, anyway, a question to the audience here. We have three and a quarter inch baseboards and our outlets on our walls are a little low. Uh, and they won't fit a regular wall plate. And I really don't want to cut like 25 nylon wall plates down to size by shaving off like a quarter inch. Uh, I saw one online, but why are not, or why aren't there, as he would say in English, uh, why aren't there custom size wall plates? Can I just order one that's like a short on the bottom? Uh, why is that not a thing? And if it isn't actually a thing, uh, someone should start a company that does that. I'm sure there's a niche market for that um, or not. In fact, maybe that's why there isn't one. Maybe there is no niche market for that. But anyway, if you have any wall plate advice, please feel free to forward it. Uh, other than that, things are going pretty well. I can't believe it's fall. Where did summer go? It's a mystery. It was like spring and I was posting pictures of things sprouting out of the garden. And then all of a sudden it was 111 and uh, plants were spontaneously combusting in the, in the vegetable beds, uh, which is not a good look. Uh, the good news is I thought everything got fried, but now that it cooled down a little bit, although today it's going to be super hot again, but it actually cooled down a little bit last week and we watered really well and actually uh, were there almost every day. And things are starting to sort of perk up. Uh, we have some pepper plants that have brand new flowers that haven't flowered in like a month. So that's good. Uh, anyway, that's the updates. Uh, I hope you're all doing well and uh, ready for fall. My favorite cooking season, as I think most chefs and foodies uh, would agree, it's probably the best time of the year to cook. Um, just all my favorite dishes or style of cooking. I love to braise. I like stews. I like soups. So uh, for me, this is the best time of year. We can still sneak in some of the fresh produce stuff, summery type recipes, grilling, etc. Uh, but you get a few chilly nights and we also can get away with braising some short ribs and things like that. Uh, thanks, Michael. Anyway, welcome aboard. Uh, welcome to all the new members. Uh, a special welcome to all the original members and old members. Uh, both in years and how long they've been following the channel. Uh, let's start in with some questions. Thanks, Marcus. Yeah, someone already managed to dislike the video. There's no video on YouTube that will not get disliked, even if it's not even a video. If you just put something up, a picture of a cat, somebody will dislike it. So don't get too upset. It's all part of the show. I know, 90 degrees, Omar, doesn't feel like autumn, but don't worry, it'll get, it'll get cool. It'll get cool. Omar says, we should wait for more viewers before asking for wall plate advice. You know what, I figured the people that are new, you know, first jump on the chat are your go-getters, so that's why I asked early, it's fine. Uh, Paul made our Roladen with skirt steak, and it was fabulous. Uh, best gravy I've ever had, no question. That is an amazing gravy. Everyone should make beef Roladen. The secret is the pickle. I know, Brian, I could carve a quarter inch off the bottom, uh, but I can't do that. That's too precise for me. I'm like 
not cut or cut all the way through kind of guy. Um, best off modifying baseboards. Anyway, raise your hand if you signed up for the chat today to read about baseboards. So let's move it to the food. It's Chuck Row season. Yes, Angie. Definitely Chuck Row season. Uh, there's nothing like a nice pot roast. Do you, do, is that what you're referring to? Uh, chili con carne, bro. Thanks, Spacehead. Uh, Heather wants to know if we've captured any new animals on our wildlife cam. We have a motion detector cam at Kismet that uh, I am really hoping to capture a mountain lion so I can prove that the uh, droppings I saw a few months ago were actually from a small mountain lion and not from an extra large raccoon. Um, no, we haven't gotten any exciting shots. Uh, we've gotten a fox. We've gotten a bobcat. We've gotten a skunk, a deer, a um, raccoon. Did I already say that? Um, but no super exotic, unexpected animals. But it's, gonna, it's out there every night. It's only a matter of time before I capture that giant uh, mountain lion creeping through my backyard, and then I will become even more terrified than I already am. All right, here we go. Whoops, 300 questions just flew by. Let's find some good ones. And I'll go back and read the tables, uh, the uh, baseboard and sawing responses later, so uh, we won't bore people with that too much now. Let's, uh, let's bore them with other things. Whoops, hold on, I got a text. Whoops, it's my neighbor, don't worry. Everything's cool. Thanks, Sophie, if you're watching. Any ideas for things I can routinely substitute for garlic? I'm unable to eat it. Uh, I'm starting to use anchovies, which is a fascinating substitute for garlic. Um, here's the problem, and you can't use onions either, I'm assuming. No, you can't. Uh, there is no substitute for garlic. Just like when people ask about substitutes for mushrooms or, well, that's a good example. There's nothing like a mushroom or a clove of garlic that you can like simulate with other ingredients. So you just have to not put it in. It's unfortunate. Um, now I know a leek is actually like, is that from a lily family? Like there's something I'm remembering from way back when that maybe you can eat leeks which of course is not a you know super close to garlic flavor, but it's something. So maybe you can eat leeks, maybe you can't. Check that out. That would be my only idea, but that is a tough one. Um, a few weeks ago, Ramon made duck riettes with pork and duck. Wow, that is a good move. If you have not made riettes, you have to do that. This is perfect riette weather, uh, especially with party season coming up, assuming we're able to gather in groups at some point, fingers crossed. Um, if you're not familiar with a riette, it is pork and or duck and or some other fatty meat that you cook very slowly in its own juices, its own fat. You let it cool, you shred it, you mash it, you season it, you know, dealer's choice. You pack it in a crock or a jar. You put a little fat on the top to seal it and you just let that sort of age and cure and it is like the best spread ever, toasted bread, crackers, you name it. Uh, do not go through life not eating riettes at least twice a year. That's my advice this morning to you. Uh, people like the anchovy substitute for garlic. I'm, you know, I'm all, I'm all for putting anchovies in literally every dish. No problem there. But as far as a substitute for garlic, I don't know. Can we say that? It's... Uh, it's tough. Yes, Space said we do. Thank you. Shallots. I assume if you can't eat garlic, you can't eat shallots. But if you can, use shallots. Thanks, Chef Christopher Tucker. Thank you very much. Brian made our Salisbury, Salisbury steak today. My beef isn't as lean as yours, so I was thinking of using the render frat to make, brie, make gravy after frying the steaks. Do you think it'll be good if I do that? Yes. Um, it'll be, you know, more greasy, which is not generally a good culinary term, but uh, it'll just be a little fattier is all, a little richer of a gravy. Uh, you don't have to use all of it, by the way. You can just use some of the uh, beef fat. Uh, but anyway, that should work. In fact, technically a gravy has to be made with the rendered fat from the meat. Otherwise, it's not 
a true gravy, according to people that worry about these things, which I am not in that group. I'll call anything you put over food a gravy, even if it's a sauce. Uh, but anyway, Donna Lamb, how you doing, Donna? She's been fooling around with sumac. Uh, any interest in trying out Zatar? Yes, I will put that on something one day. I've gotten a few, few requests for that. People are confirming Zatar is amazing. Spacehead's got Peking duck in the freezer saving for Thanksgiving. That would be a great Thanksgiving bird. I love turkey, but you know, turkey is only so exciting. And believe me, we've tried to make it exciting, as you know, over the years. We got some crazy, crazy turkey recipes. Uh, John, how about ask for Taller? What's Taller? I've never used it. Don't exactly know what it is, but I've heard it referenced. Yeah, I don't know. Taller, is that a person, a place, a thing? Someone help me out. Thanks, Jennies. And cool, canoe chick. That's redundant. Any chicks that canoe are cool. That Everyone knows that. Uh, Heather wants to know, any plans on making any goofy Halloween theme dishes? Not sure what I'm doing yet. Well, every year I try to do something goofy uh, for Thanksgiving, or sorry, for Halloween, um, which is, of course, the big goofy food holiday before Thanksgiving. Uh, no, I don't have anything planned yet. Um, I'm thinking of doing some banana bread pancakes, and maybe I could make, like, scary faces on them or something since that'll probably air around the same time as I would need a goofy uh, Halloween-themed dish. Uh, but no, I don't have anything yet. If any anyone has an idea or a suggestion for a goofy Halloween uh, treat, pass it along. Don't bother me with scary recipes. There's no such thing as a scary Halloween recipe in the history of recipes. Uh, although our face pie was kind of scary. But it was more disturbing and nightmare-causing uh, than actual scary. Uh, Abner put cayenne in his scrambled eggs this morning, having a great day. Well, of course. How are you not going to have a great day starting off with cayenne? Uh, Ashton wants to uh, make those biscuit donuts. <laughs> I laugh every time I think of them. That was hilarious. I can't believe I did that. Um, he wants to pipe them with lemon curd. Sure, that would totally work. Uh, do I have a recipe for lemon curd? I'm pretty sure we do. Somebody Google Food Wishes Lemon Curd. I'm almost positive we do. And if we don't, uh, that really should be on the list for, uh, excuse me, that really should be on the list for uh, recipes coming up in the near future. Uh, yes, the biscuit donut was a very strange recipe video. Um, they didn't really taste like biscuits. They just didn't really taste like donuts either. Uh, but they really look like biscuits. So I call them biscuits. Uh, in the food world, anything that looks like a biscuit, you can legally call a biscuit. Uh, in fact, even in the non-food world, um, which is why you will hear a hockey announcer every once in a while when someone scores a goal, they'll say, they put the biscuit in the basket, uh, which is one of my favorite sports calls of all time. So uh, anyway, I'm glad you uh, are thinking of playing around with that. Um, it wasn't technically a failure, but it wasn't a huge success either. Uh, yeah, we got apple pie videos, Space said. You better believe it. Uh, don't be dog's body. Uh, I meant asofeta. I don't know what that is. Asofeta. Don't know. Help me out. I can't Google while I chat. And I have a fan in here, so if Michelle Googles in the background and yells what it is, I can't hear. Um, you know, we need to, I need like a big suite of like the sports talk shows where they have like a bunch of interns on laptops just giving the host info and they sound and look smart. Uh, man, I would love to look and sound smart one day. Hey, Grape Tomato Girl, where are you been? Good to have you with us. Boneless turkey, lots of work, but very convenient for serving. Yes, if you're looking, I know we're getting ahead of ourselves, but if you're looking for a turkey 
uh, video or turkey recipe to really blow the minds of your guests this year. If you buy one now, practice on it, and then do it for Thanksgiving. You take a bony knife and you take out all the bones, and then you stuff it and you season it and you flavor it, not necessarily in that order. And then you roll it and you tie it and you roast this big giant boneless tube of turkey goodness and the skin gets all crispy and renders the fat over the tube of turkey and you slice beautiful rounds and you put it on a plate with some gravy. Uh, man, I almost want turkey now and that's saying something. Um, yes, everyone try that. Parmalat sounds good. Sumya, I hope I said that right. A few chunks of brie in it. Wow, very good. I'm a big fan of putting brie in things. I had a turkey and brie sandwich a few weeks ago. Very nice. Brian wants to know, what's the reason for always getting the pan hot before adding your ingredients? No, it has nothing to do with the flavor. Uh, doesn't necessarily have to do with the texture. Uh, mostly it's because when you put a piece in, uh, let's just talk meat for now. When you put a piece of meat in the pan, moisture comes out. When it hits the heat, moisture comes out. And if the pan is really hot, that moisture, you know, water evaporates, of course. That moisture evaporates really quickly, and any of the, the proteins and the goodness and the tasty stuff coming out of the meat actually will sear right back onto the meat. That's what makes that beautiful crust and brown sear, you see. Uh, Maillard effect, I think, is the technical term. Uh, Maillard. Maillard. Am I pronouncing the duck instead? Anyway, it will sear on if the pan's hot enough. If the pan's not hot enough, it will just start to boil. The juices will not evaporate fast enough, and you'll have gray, wet, uh, boiling meat. And no one's ever gone into a restaurant asking if they had uh, any gray, wet, boiling meat on special. So that's why. And in fact, uh, on our recent, um, our recent video I filmed, that you haven't seen yet, so I shouldn't have said R. But anyway, there's going to be a video coming up this week for um, Lomo Sotado, which is a Peruvian stir fry that you're supposed to fry the meat in small batches so it gets all beautifully browned. Uh, I did a little hack method, a little cheater, where I threw all the meat in. It sort of browns a little bit, but then the moisture starts coming out and it starts boiling. If you quickly remove all the meat and let that juice reduce down to a glaze and it gets all caramelized like a beautiful fond on the bottom of the pan, then you throw the meat back in and quickly finish it for a minute. You can simulate having a hot enough pan the whole way. Uh, so anyway, it's mostly to get that beautiful sear on there. And yes, technically it can affect the texture because some meats or most meats, when you boil them, they get much tougher and drier than if you sear and keep some moisture inside. So anyway, long-winded answer. Uh, generally, you always want to get your pan fairly hot before putting food in. This goes for, especially for stainless steel pans. Um, Nonstick, not as critical, although you should get them hot. It's just some of the cheaper nonstick pans, it's not considered safe to get them super hot. It can actually affect the, the nonstick coating. Uh, let's see here. Grape Tomato Girl finally understands biscuit in the basket saying, uh, yes, yeah, quite different from bun in the oven. <laughs> That's for sure. In fact, you just reminded me of the only dirty Canadian joke I know. I can't say it on the chat. But uh, if you have my email, send me an email. I will send you, send you back. I, I don't think I'll get in trouble for that, will I? Um, <laughs> Thank you, people joining that I can't pronounce your name. We really appreciate it. Uh, if you're wondering or interested, if you click on the join button below, below any of the uh, videos, uh, you can become a member, uh, which is perfect for people that are like, yeah, I can get all this stuff for free, but I would like to pay a little bit. Um, so go ahead and click on the join button if you're interested. Uh, XCycloBob56X, thank you. At a glance, I look hard, and then I decided to... Uh, to try it. Uh, Angie wants to know if I ever store leftover animal fats from braising to cook with later. Not really, but I should. Um, see, in our modern spoiled lifestyles, we forget how valuable animal fat used to be. And like that was the most calorie intensive part. And people like would, you know, just keep that and give the rest of the stuff away. Um, nowadays, we got so much fat 
so much fat, it's fat everywhere, pan, refrigerator, there's fat coming out of our ears, uh, sometimes literally, um, that I don't generally skim, you know, beef stew fat and strain it and put it through cheesecloth and then store it and wrap it up. Um, it, it's a kind of a shame because that's super good tasting stuff. Um, bacon fat, occasionally, yes, that's kind of a no-brainer. If you got a lot of bacon fat um, and you have recipes coming up that would use that, that's always a good idea. But as far as skimming things off cooking food, I, den I generally discard that, unfortunately. Um, I probably shouldn't admit that online. All the foodies pretend they save all that stuff. They don't. They're not keeping it real like Chef John. Uh, Ashton, what do we stuff boneless turkey with? The same stuff you stuff boned turkey with or bone-in turkey with. Same, any of your favorite stuffings. You just roll it inside. Same difference. That's why I say buy a small turkey and practice. You'll be shocked. And if you're new, whenever I just stop and stare at the screen, I'm trying to read with my uh, very poor eyesight nowadays with my reading glasses here, some of these, some of these questions. Uh, Paul, yes, if you boil the salt pork a little bit or soak it and rinse the water or change the water a few times, uh, that will definitely take the salt out. Uh, very simple. Just soak it overnight in a lot of water. Uh, you can also, like I said, blanch it in some boiling water if you want to do a quicker version. Uh, drain it. That seems to be a pretty good technique. Uh, redu Juice Reduce sounds like a Rob Schneider character. That is correct. Jay Sanders, thank you very much. Yes, great tomato girl. No problem. That's totally understandable. Thank you, Robin. Greatly appreciated. Michael West, thank you for pronouncing my name correctly. Why wouldn't I? Uh, is it Michael? Did I say? Are you being sarcastic? Did I say it right? See, Michael, I think I could do the other half. Of the other names, I have no chance. Michelle, people like when you laugh in the background. She said, "Say something funny," and I will. There you go. That's the stuff. <laughs> and it's really lovely to read, but I'm not sure how quite to take that that's the main reason people get on the chats is to hear Michelle laugh. Uh, hopefully you're just saying that. Susan, thank you. Welcome aboard. Ambient, ambient deal. Ambient ideal. Welcome aboard. Robin's on a diet. Yep, COVID-20, gotcha. I thought it was the COVID-15. Now it's the COVID-20. Next week, it's going to be the COVID-30. This COVID has to end before we all, well, look like me. It will. Don't worry. Everybody wear a mask. We'll beat this thing. Cold hands, warm hands. Uh, cool canoe chick. Yeah. We did get a lot of tomatoes in our garden considering the just horrible weather as far as the heat and, and our uh, neglect because we would drive back and forth from San Francisco. And there were a couple days when it was like, man, we really need water today. And then we'd plan on going up and then we'd get delayed by something here in the city and wouldn't be able to go up till next morning. And all, cons all things considered, they actually uh, produced pretty well. Not big, small tomatoes. That's just from not fertilizing enough not having amended soil, uh, properly amended soil. But anyway, this year was practice. This year was like, let's do a half-ass garden and do the house at the same time. Uh, and that worked out perfectly. It was really half-assed. But lots of fresh veggies for a fairly minimum amount of effort. It's just so nice being able to walk out and pick a yellow squash or a zucchini, a couple peppers, and you throw them in, a, in some scrambled eggs and you don't have to go to the store. It's like, except for the eggs. Uh, it's a great deal. Which reminds me, I know, we got to get some chickens, right? Why, am I, why are we paying for eggs? That seems silly. Donna had our beef and barley stew. Uh, that sounds like a perfect dish for this coming season. Uh, yes, Paul, that's a fun fact. 
McDonald's did used to use beef fat to cook their French fries in for like a long time, which is why they were the greatest fries ever. Uh, and which is why I remember an interview with Julia Child when she was asked uh, some of her favorite foods and she said McDonald's French fries and everyone lost their minds. Uh, but she was referring to the old days when they used beef fat, which really does an incredible, um, incredible French fry. In fact, maybe somebody knows this. There's a famous restaurant in the Midwest somewhere, I believe a steakhouse that cooks their baked potatoes in a like vat of molten beef fat. And it's supposed to be like the most ultimate baked potato. See, now I want a baked potato cooked in beef fat and I can't have that or won't have that today. Anyway, if you know that restaurant, let me know. Thanks, Quentin. Duck fat. And yes, duck fat is delicious. Michelle's reminding me. What's the most underrated dish to serve at Thanksgiving? Uh, nachos. Uh, just classic, classic nachos, the cheese, the beans, the, the whole nine yards. You put that next to the turkey, everyone's like wondering if you've lost your mind, and but they eat it, and they'll be like, this is great. Um, and then they'll say, are, are you, have you been partaking in a certain herbal remedy? before you did this menu. Uh, no, the most underrated dish to serve at Thanksgiving, um, I don't know. Underrated is, underrated, I think of like mashed potato because it doesn't get the glory it should. It seems like an afterthought, like, oh, there's some, some mashed potatoes. But, you know, th those to me are like the highlight of the meal, so. I got shouted out today on Kenji Lopez video. He's a fan. Well, that's awesome. I would love to do a collab. Um, so, you know, I thought he was mad at me because he doesn't follow me on Twitter or stop following me. Um, probably because of all the uh, retweets I do, which I am proud to show off all your work. But I can see where it's annoying getting like 30 retweets buzzing on your feed uh, from me. Uh, anyway, I'm sure, it's an, I'm sure it's a complete oversight. Uh, I am a huge Kenji fan. And I would love to do a collab. He's actually relatively close. Uh, we've had a, you know, talked about a beer drinking many years ago that hasn't happened. But one of these days, Kenji and I are going to share an IPA or something similar, and we're going to talk shop. And mostly we're going to talk about you all. And I got a lot of, I got a lot of stories for him, and I'm sure he does too. Uh, but anyway, yes, appreciate it. I did not know that. Thank you, Kenji. Huge fan. Right back at you. Uh, Brian, assuming someone... Recently obtained 10 pounds of fennel seeds. What are some great recipes to use a lot of fennel? Uh, Brian, I could give you 10 awesome fennel using recipes, and you can make those, you know, once a day for the next, I don't know how many weeks, and you're not using up 10 pounds of fennel seed. So I would think maybe you should go into the uh, puree business. What you do is you take a handful of those, with some other smelly stuff, some lavender, just some stuff, you know, that nobody wants to smell. Dried herbs, dried flowers. You put it in a little satchel. You use some script. People love like, a, you know, that old Englishy type stuff. And you write like ye old potpourri featuring fennel. And you give that away as a, as a non-edible Christmas gift. And people are like, oh, my God, this is amazing. I never wanted a package of potpourri in my life. But I'm going to pretend because uh, sausage because because Brian you know Brian got a package of it and tea fennel tea oh Michelle's reminding me that you can make tea out of fennel of course sausage but you use like a tablespoon what are you doing with the other nine point nine seven pounds uh, anyway I'm more interested in finding out how someone comes to buy a ten pound fennel seed package or five pounds ground and five pounds whole that sounds crazy. Um, it reminds me of that time, was it Donna bought 150 pounds of blueberries? Similar issue. Anyway, you're on your own on that one. Ambient Ideal, thank you so much. It's my pleasure. Thank you for joining, Greg. Yes, Great Tomato Girl, we're with you. Bring on 21. 
Uh, Quentin needs a chili to bring to parents' house for Christmas. I want to be Chris. I want to do Christmas with you guys if you are going to be bringing chili. Uh, we pair chili with the most perfect tamales. Should I use your firehouse chili recipe? Yes. No, actually. Yes, you should use the chili recipe. But if you're showing up at a party that's doing perfect tamales and you show up with some Chef John wannabe cornbread crust on top of the chili, that's not going to be received very well. People are people will think you're, you know, effing with them. Like, why did you bring a tamale pie to my tamale party? So, yes, make the chili. Do not put the topping on. That will, I think, be taken as an insult, as it should. Uh, but, no, the chili recipe <clears throat> in that dish is amazing. Uh, in fact, my good friend, the lovely and talented, um, excuse me, let me have a drink here. Andrew Scrivani, that's what I was trying to spit out <clears throat> as I started choking. Uh, Andrew made a beautiful firehouse chili and didn't put the top on, and I gave him a hard time. <clears throat> it's not the smoke, by the way. It's post-nasal drip. The air is beautifully clear here. It is so nice to have oxygen again. <laughs> All right, that was not that funny, Michelle. <laughs> Michelle. Michelle thinks it's funny I can breathe again. What's my favorite fast food restaurant to eat at? Popeye's Chicken. That's an easy one. Uh, so much MSG. So much. Love it. I never eat MSG except when I go to Popeye's. Hey, Greg. Thank you for joining. Garlic mashed potatoes, bro. Thanks, Spacehead. Uh, Paul's brother married into a Greek family. Congratulations. That's always a good move. Uh, Ago Lamano, I still cannot pronounce that. Uh, and Pastizio at Thanksgiving, that sounds great. Buffalo wings fries everything in beef tallow. Is that true? Buffalo wild wings? That doesn't seem right. How can they do that? That seems like it would be illegal these days. Uh, so, uh, Sumya says fennel is great in desserts. I don't know about that. Maybe a few. Uh, I think I've had it in a cookie. It was okay. I would love to give you suggestions on these dishes I've never heard of, but I can't. I always have to Google them after the chat. Paul, when is the Baptist collab happening? Good question. Uh, Andrew, fly out to San Francisco or Sonoma so we can do that. And I'm talking about Andrew Wade. Andrew Ray, not, um, not Andrew Scrivani. Although they both should fly out, and we can all do a uh, we can all do a video together. Thanks, James. Uh, Leslie's thinking of making the rigatoni alla genovese using beef short ribs. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. I am a fan of substituting beef short ribs in anything, everything. Uh, so yes, as far as a pressure cooker to shorten the time, yes, you can use it and yes, it will shorten the time, but I don't know how, because I just don't use a pressure cooker very much. It is very, it's, I don't know. It's, it's something I don't think about. I like slow cooking. I don't like fret fast under pressure, pressurized, high pressure cooking. It's too, too much pressure. Uh, so anyway, that's my take. Yes, snorting that fresh air like it's cocaine. I don't know. I'd have to take your word for it. Uh, Susan likes the Vitello Tonato. Yes. Uh, sounds like a crazy dish, but there's an Italian dish where you put uh, a tuna sauce over pork, over roasted pork. Uh, cold pork, believe it or not. And it sounds insane. It is so good. So good. Uh, I'm pretty sure we did a video for that. Uh, I'm almost hoping we didn't so I could now make that. Uh, but yes, if you um, if you never had tomato sauce, it is on the bucket list. Please, please make it. Uh, 
Uh, what's my best dish? Wait, hold on. I'm confused now. Uh, X Cyclo Bob 56 X. Hate tomatoes. What are your best dishes for removing the taste? Outside of marinara tomato soup. Um, well, this is going to sound crazy, but I think the most effective way for removing the, uh, the taste of tomato from a dish, uh, I have to say, is not putting them in in the first place. Um, so I think I might be confused by the question. Uh, but, yeah, don't put them in. So don't even think about it. Um, use something that's not tomato. Uh, in fact, anything that's not tomato will work instead. Uh, cool canoe chick, still make your beer bread and ciabatta. Why wouldn't you? Once you start making bread, you can't stop. Um, so I'm assuming everybody on this board, everyone on this chat has made bread from scratch. If you haven't, that's your homework. Uh, it is life-changing, and I know people throw that around. Um you know, very, very liberally. But no, making your own bread is life-changing. And even the I can't have gluten people, they have some amazing gluten-free flour mixes these days, and you can make some really nice bread. So no excuses. Make made bread. Um, I've never done one of those, by the way. I'm afraid of it. But, uh, but I hear they work out really well. Pam, how you doing? Hi. Are you okay now? Pam Rosenthal got a high. All right, don't feel neglected. Michelle is smashing it with the laughs. Yes, Susan. Thank you. Totally stealing my thunder, stealing the show. All right, X Cyclo Bob has clarified 56X. I don't like raw tomato smell taste, but use them constantly in chili sauce. But does cooking them take out their taste? Apparently it does. So if you like them cooked, keep doing your, what you're doing. I like your strategy. Uh, 25 minutes left till stream getting agitated. What does that mean, Aber? Abner? Uh, you can replace tomatoes with squash for texture. No, no, you can't. But I guess you can. And once again, I'm probably missing a few people. Thank you for all uh, the new members joining. Uh, I really think you, there's no way you're going to regret that at all. Uh, it's a great decision. Uh, I even pronounced Michael, new member Michael West's name correctly, uh, which I'm sure he was very exciting. Uh, Jenny's. And, of course, when I missed your question, which I did probably, just, re, just repost it. Oh, just reminded me, uh, we're doing a dish very soon that some of you may or may not have heard of uh, called Jamaican Brown Stew Chicken. Does that ring a bell with anybody? Uh, it sounds incredible. I cannot wait to test it. Um, apparently, it is basically like a jerk chicken as far as the seasonings and flavorings go, but it's stewed in gravy, and then you serve it over rice. I am very much excited. If you have any Jamaican brown stew chicken tips or tricks, please post them, uh, and I will take a read. Um, the one thing I'm a little not confused about, but I'm going to try to wing it without, there's some sauce they call browning. It's like a, I guess it's compared to kitchen bouquet. It's like that brown, really, really dark black brown liquid you add to gravies and soups and stuff stocks and stews and stuff to make them really like a beautiful deep uh brown color um but i'm not gonna buy that i don't want to jar that around i don't know why but apparently you can make it just by caramelizing some sugar so i'm gonna try to do it that way um i'm gonna use brown sugar i think you're supposed to use coconut sugar but anyway this dish sounds incredible i'm gonna do it with bone-in skin on chicken thighs just to give you a heads up because i know some people get mad if I don't use chicken breast on everything. But anyway, Jamaican uh, brown stew chicken. Uh, also, if you have a Jamaican uh, adjacent rhyme that will work for that video, let me know. I might just go with uh, uh, Tosh of your Nosh. 
Was it Jimmy Tosh? P no, that's Jimmy Cliff. Peter. Peter Tosh. What am I thinking? Come on. I used to be a big reggae guy. Well, medium. Medium reggae guy. <laughs> All right, Michelle. Take it easy back there. Michelle's been drinking all morning. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. That's not true. It's not just been this morning. Oh yeah, Rima has a good uh, good suggestion for all those fennel seeds. Uh, you mix them. Oh, inside fish. See, you just, I glanced at your comment and I didn't read it all. I thought you said put the fennel in the salt and then bake the fish. Um, you said put the fennel in the fish and bake it in salt, which also would be fantastic. Um, but uh, one way to, that's a really cool method for cooking fish is you take some rock salt or a really large grain salt, something that won't like absorb into the fish too much. And then you spice it with all kinds of whole spices. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, you spice it. Fennel seeds are perfect. Peppercorns, uh, star anise, all that kind of stuff. And then you put that on a baking sheet or in a pan or, or some kind of baking dish. And then you lay your fish on top and you bake it on that very fragrant uh, heat absorbing salt pad and it's a really nice way to do fish uh, it's also a great way to disguise the smell of fish in your kitchen if you're not you know into that kind of thing um, the other way is to do that same thing only take egg whites and mix them in with the salt to make like a uh, almost like a clay that's not a good description not a clay almost like a mortar like a salt cement and then you pack that over the fish and you put that in a really hot oven. Um, now, a little tough to gauge the doneness is the only drawback. So you kind of have to wait, um, or you kind of have to test it, uh, or wait till it's done to know if you did it right. Um, but anyway, that would be another way to get rid of a handful of fennel seeds. Uh, of all the problems I thought we were going to have to solve today, I did not see that one coming. All right, moving on. Do I like liver and onions? And if so, do I have a good recipe for liver and onions? Well, Ashton, that's a tough one to answer. I have had liver and onions before and very much enjoyed it. I've also had it and hated it so much. Um, there's like such a fine line. You can't really cook liver rare, but once it's fully cooked and you get full like that full minerality, is that the proper word? Um, where you just get that blood flavor, for lack of a you know nicer term. Um, then I don't enjoy it. The best liver and onions I ever had, and I forget where it was. It was in San Francisco. It was calf's liver, so a nice tender young veal liver um, that they had marinated in milk overnight. And then it was just quickly pan seared, um, of course, with onions. And it was just ever so pink inside, like not medium rare, just like perfect. And it was like eating butter. It was so good. I actually thought of that liver and onions dish like occasionally. This now, of course, just brought it up. That was in Berkeley. It was in Berkeley, I'm being told by Michelle. We had that in Berkeley. Do you know the restaurant? Well, come on. It was Italian. She got the she got the uh, she got the city right. It was Italian. It was Italian restaurant in Berkeley. All right, Italian restaurant in Berkeley. If anyone knows of the Italian Italian restaurant in Berkeley uh, that does the beautiful calves liver, but I tried to recreate that a couple of times using regular beef liver, and it was so not successful uh, that I may have given up. I'll have to find some calves liver and retry that. So technically, yes, I am a fan if done perfectly, but it is really, really hard to do perfectly. Uh, 
Uh, someone's telling me Wall Works in San Francisco serves a good liver. I will go try try it out. Uh, Wall Works sounds like they serve good beer. So I think even if I don't find the liver to my liking, I will be able to uh, offset that. Yes, Anna, hard to find calves liver now. Thanks a lot, PETA. No, I shouldn't, I shouldn't joke about that. I'm a, I'm a PETA supporter, uh, not with money, of course, or any time or attention. But just the idea of being nicer to animals, I think we all should get behind that. Spacehead, delete that comment. That is not appropriate at all. Trinidad apparently has some great brown stewed chicken recipes. Now, is it brown stew chicken, chicken brown stew? Am I even saying it in the right order? Grape Tomato Girl knows what a dubstep remix is, which I used to know. Someone remind me. Uh, but they want to do a dubstep remix of Michelle's Laugh. I'm all for that. Uh, Mystic Mind, thank you for the question. Excuse me, I have to drink again. I'm about to choke. <clears throat> Demi Glaze caramelized is called what? I can't find the spelling. Sounds like Jew, most delicious thing ever. You're, uh, you're probably thinking of a Jew, which is just a generic word for the you know juice, the the liquid coming out of meat that we serve with food sometimes, like as you, where you dip it in the in the drippings. Um, when you take a demi-glaze <clears throat> and reduce it all the way down, uh, there's one thing, was it glace de vion? There's some fancy French term. When you reduce it all the way down till it's like even thicker and richer than a normal demi-glaze. Now, I've had that before and it's, you know, lovely, but you can overdo it. Demi-glaze is already so rich and like meaty and flavorful. Sometimes you can go too far and it just becomes... Uh, what's the word? Too much? Overdone? It can somebody be too rich? Have you ever had a, like a dessert that was too rich and it was the first bite was good and the second bite you weren't sure and then the third or fourth bite you're like I seriously need to stop eating this? Sometimes that can happen when you reduce a sauce down too much. So be careful. Um, now I feel bad I couldn't give you the name but I think you mean ajou or jou is a just a Fancy French term for some meat drippings, juices left in the pan. Uh, someone said, put fennel and vodka for a wonderful cocktail. Yes. In fact, you just reminded me, uh, there's a lovely Scandinavian restaurant that Michelle and I used to go to back in the, uh, the before times that served a clear white liquor, aquavit, I'm being told. Uh, which I think is is a Swedish vodka, Scandinavian vodka-like drink. And the my favorite one is actually fennel-flavored. And you eat that with a some gravlax or some kind of cured salmon or fish, um, pickled herring, of course, and it is insanely good. Uh, so I feel like out of that 10 pounds of fennel, I think we – have solutions for at least 9.8 pounds of it so far, or everything but 8.9 pounds of it. So uh, we're getting there. Uh, Tom wants to know, how can I make thin sliced top round more tender? You have to pound it, pound it, pound it, pound it and it will be more tender. Other than that, there's not really a great way. I've seen some of those semi-viral videos where people are like, can I turn top round into filet by salting it and dry aging? You know, not really. It gets a little better. Uh, but no, thinly sliced, pound it, pound it, pound it, coat it in flour, hot pan, sear it, a lot of fat, and make like chicken fried steak out of it, and that will be tender enough. 
or not, but you won't care because it's coated in a crispy crust and it's delicious. All right, moving on. You're so dressy. Thank you for all your goodness. Love your laugh track. Hi, Michelle. Thank you for using the emojis that I don't understand why they made me do those. I got two wooden spoons and a smiley face. My favorite movie. Good question. Uh, that's, a, that's a tough one. Probably Big Night, as Michelle tells me what my favorite movie is, so I don't have to think. Um, yes, Big Night is one of my favorite movies of all time. Um, Harold and Maude, The Big Lebowski, uh, I guess Pulp Fiction, although I think I've seen it too many times now. Uh, none of the classic ones, like all the ones you're supposed to love, like Citizen Kane. What's up with that? Terrible movie. Um, so, and I think I've mentioned this before, very politically incorrect, but I was not a huge fan of Black Panther. That makes me a bad person, I think. Um, so sometimes everyone loves a movie and I just don't like it that much. And I feel bad. Um, and then other times things I think are brilliant. People are like, that's the dumbest movie ever. So, you know, there's no accounting for taste. But if you have not seen Big Night, and I've, this is probably the eighth chat that I've shouted out Big Night and told people to watch it, uh, you have to go rent, buy, stream, whatever you kids are doing these days. Um, you have to watch Big Night. And I don't even think it's called The Big Night. I think it's just Big Night. Uh, a young Stanley Tucci, a very, very, very young Mark Anthony, believe it or not. The singer is a busboy. If that, you know, turns you on. But anyway, go check that out. That's nice. Great tomato girl. Thank you. Only 90% though? Come on. They can do better than that. <clears throat> Michael West wants to know, sugar versus baking soda in tomato sauce. That's a good question. There's an old trick where if you're cooking a tomato sauce, and you take a little bit of baking soda, not powder, baking soda. You sprinkle a little bit over the top, just like a pinch, big pinch. And you stir that in and you wait a few minutes. You'll see all this, well, not all, but a little bit of foam coming to the top. And what people say that is, is the soda neutralizing the acids in the tomato sauce and improving the flavor, making it sweeter. Now, I have done that trick. I think I've shown it in videos. I think the jury is still out on how much of an effect that has. So that's different than putting sugar in a tomato sauce. All right, if you put sugar in a tomato sauce, it's going to do nothing for the acid content. It'll just make it sweeter. So that's the difference. Uh, so it's not a like either or type situation. If your tomatoes you're using are not super sweet, there's absolutely nothing wrong with cheating with a little bit of sugar, just a little. You don't want sweet, like sweet, sweet tomato sauce. It should taste natural. Um, but if you do, for whatever reason, you're – salute. For, an, for any reason, you are forced to buy like an off-brand, you know, like you're at the dollar store and you're like, I just bought a jar of sauce. It's, I want to try it. And it's like really acidic. A little pinch of baking soda might, might help out. All right. So try it out. See what you think. Uh, Rebecca Nixon, uh, who I believe is Richard Nixon's great-granddaughter, if my sources are correct, um, wants to know, can I, do my, can I do some smoked meat recipes using a green egg? Yeah, I probably could. We're probably getting to the end of using the grill smoking season, and we've been spending so much time in Sonoma, and the green egg is here in San Francisco. So it's been a little challenging trying to, you know, trying to do anything on that. Uh, but I am a fan of the smoked meat. So maybe we will try to do something. I've never done an actual proper brisket. <clears throat> Excuse me. Bless you too, Yosef. Uh, yes, James says if you use the San Marzano tomatoes, they are sweet enough. Good Reminder, 
When you're out shopping for canned tomatoes, spend the extra couple dollars and find a jar that says San Marzano tomatoes. But not just says San Marzano tomatoes. They're actually from Italy and they're actually from San Marzano because there's a company and I won't name names, but not surprisingly, they're based in New Jersey. It sells a plum tomato in a can and it says San Marzano and then like in small print style. So they're not really from San Marzano, Italy. Watch out for those folks. Um, but if you find a real San Marzano tomato, it's just a beautiful, sweet plum tomato variety um, that they actually let grow, strange enough, till it's ripe, and then they pick them. Uh, for some reason in America, we pick all our tomatoes green and then make stuff out of it, and we wait for them to artificially ripen, and it's just a travesty, which is why we're forced to grow our own tomatoes around here. So uh, anyway, yes, look out for those. <clears throat> Don't worry, I got back up. Vegas, Vagas, welcome aboard. Thank you very much. I stopped thanking people for joining, so if I missed you, welcome aboard. Thank you for people using the uh, food wishes emojis for no apparent reason. Again, they didn't let me do the membership thing unless I picked and made five emojis. It's just so ridiculous. I don't understand it, any of this. But that's okay. I'm in my late 50s. I don't have to understand anything anymore. I can just talk about the good old days and how we used to do it without emojis. We were just like, peace. Okay. Well, you know. You know what I'm saying. We got our, we got our message across. Elwin, thank you. I appreciate all Kenji's lovely comments. Uh, I consider him one of the ultimate sources online. So hopefully all my compliments are going to get back to him. Uh, someone make that happen. Uh, Great Tomato Girl wants to know if we ever got those horrid horned tomato worms. No, we didn't. But those are some crazy looking bugs. Uh, so hopefully you didn't just jinx me. But we had no, uh, no horrid horned tomato worms. And if you don't know what those are, Google it. It is a fascinating, fascinating insect. I mean, it's no tarantula hawk wasp. Don't get me wrong. It's not that cool. But it is, a, it is an impressive worm. So uh, go check it out. Uh, Omar made shashuka to take advantage of excess tomatoes. That is a beautiful idea. Oh, you just reminded me. If you haven't made the famous French tomato tart that we posted a few years ago, where you take puff pastry and you bake it almost crispy, poke it with fork first, was it called docking it? Prick it with a fork, bake it almost crispy, cover it with a Dijon, slice fresh tomatoes, salt, pepper, uh, herbs if you want, thyme, Gruyere cheese, other cheeses, whatever you're into. Put it in a hot oven, bake it until everything's set and caramelized and delicious. Let it cool, don't eat it warm. Oh, that's a mistake. Let it cool down and that is gonna be just an incredible way to eat tomatoes. Because this time of year, people are like, what the hell am I gonna do with these tomatoes? And other things, zucchini, fennel seeds. Uh, we just have excess, we gotta think of ways to get rid of them. Uh, Chris, Alice says no beans in Texas chili. Yes, she is correct. No, no self-respecting Texan chili maker would put a bean anywhere close to their chili. Um, everywhere, everywhere else, it's fine. Everywhere you want to go and make chili and put beans, people don't seem to have a problem. Uh, it's a Texas thing. I don't know. They get, they get, you know, irritated by that for some reason. Um, so they always think it's hilarious when someone says they're making chili con carne because they're like, yeah, thanks for the newsflash. Chili with meat sounds good. Um, anyway, chili is not supposed to have beans in it. The original Texas chili recipe. Having said that, do what you want. All right? You're the milli vanilli of your chili, as I've said 100 times. Uh, David, for potato puffs, would it be okay to use russet instead of Yukon gold? Yes. Did I use Yukon gold in my potato puff recipe? I don't remember that. 
almost always <coughs> almost always russet potato is the one you want to bake cook make things with um, it has that nice waxy starchy texture fluffy it just it's it's lighter in things like uh, puffs you just said it potatoes um, I always get very nervous when I'm ordering something in a restaurant that sounds amazing with potato. I always have to find out which potato. Because if they're using red potato and they're trying to make like a puff or a salad or a mash, I will not order it. Too waxy for me. I'm not into the waxy potato. Uh, if you want to roast those, that's fine. I could do that. But uh, for things like potato puffs, um, gnocchi, things like that, uh, I would say the russet is the way to go. Uh, oh, my God, we've already been talking for an hour. I just looked up. I can't believe it. Time flies when you are having fun. Uh, so let me get through the last of these questions, and then I will do a long, tortured sign-off, as is customary. Uh, let, me, let me get a few of these, and I'll try to do that. Uh, Abner, the stream is ending, and I don't want it to end. All right, I'll do the sarcasm. Uh, cool canoe chick, uh, who's new, but got a lot of, uh, got a lot of play this chat. I have to say, uh, made the tomato tart. So she gets mentioned again. Very good. Everyone has to make that. I'm not kidding. That and making bread is your homework. Lingua, um, is that tongue or brain? That's tongue. Yes. We need to make some beef tongue. Uh, whenever I feel like I, the videos are getting too many views and I want to sort of dial it back a little. I'll do a beef tongue uh, video, and you and 10,000 of our closest friends will watch it and enjoy it. Robin, just to brag, has says they grew 120 pounds of Santa Marzano tomatoes and canned 40 pints. Wow. That's impressive. Good going. Russell, don't worry. We'll do, we do this every couple of weeks. All right, that's it. I think I got all the questions. You have two more seconds to post one if I didn't get to it, especially if you paid for it. Otherwise, I'm going to tell everybody, thanks for joining us. Uh, enjoy the fall. Pretty soon it'll be winter, and we'll be like, where did fall go? It was just, it was just summer, and then it's, now it's winter. Um, seriously, stay safe out there. Uh, social distance, everyone's, I think we're doing good at that. Uh, in fact, hopefully that doesn't stick. I have a feeling like five years from now, people just will naturally be six feet away from everybody just by habit. Uh, wear a mask. Uh, try to, uh, you know, not get impatient. It's so easy to just want to go back to normal life. But uh, it would be so sad if we came this far and did all this, like, hard work and then had to start over. So anyway, that's my... Uh, uh, semi socially conscious, socially conscious uh, statement. And at this point, I'm going to attempt to say goodbye and hit the end stream button. Thank you, everybody. Great questions. Uh, root for the San Francisco Giants later today. Even if you don't like them, please, for me, root for them. And then, not to be a hater, but we have to root against the Milwaukee Brewers. If they lose and the Giants win, the Giants make the playoffs for the first time ever in like the last, seems like 20 years. Uh, so anyway, I'll leave you with that one selfish request on my part. Oh my God, someone just said, go Brewers. All right, now I'm ending the stream. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Appreciate all the support. It means a lot. Uh, we'll see you in a couple weeks. Uh, and uh, how do we end this? Oh, as always, enjoy. All right, I'm going to click the button. Here we go. It takes a second, so there's always an awkward few seconds here. Do I want to end the stream? Yes. Here we go. All right, end.